Your statement that Fred can file this claim, is that kind of an open door that you will negotiate with him, uh, some kind of resolution? I'm obligated to as an executor, and I don't want to get into the legalese of it, but I know from litigating with Fred Goldman through lawsuits he's filed against OJ in the past here in Nevada that he has a valid claim. So that's not the issue anymore. That is a valid claim, and it will be accepted into the estate. That's um, a big statement. So you're now acknowledging that he is a creditor based on the civil judgment um, and that he is now in line to get some amount of money uh, from this estate? That's accurate. He is a claimant. I haven't reached out to his representatives formally. Within the next few weeks, I will invite Fred Goldman, Sharon Rufo, and the Brown family to show them my homework because I've hit the ground running since Thursday evening when I found out I was the executor from A to Z with the entirety of control over Mr. Simpson's estate. And I'm going to invite them in before that time to show them what's there and show them what I've done. I am stunned at how transparent you are right now and how different what you're, you're saying pro. is from what O.J. Simpson said during his lifetime, because he would do anything to keep from paying Fred Goldman. And you sound more than receptive right now. You got to remember, I was Mr. Simpson's attorney for 15 years, first on some of his uh, his camp issues, a.k.a. prison, but and then out of out of prison dealing with issues, including Mr. Goldman's efforts to collect on that judgment here in Nevada. So I was part of Team Simpson with that attorney hat on using the laws, if I could, to make sure that he was Mr. Simpson was protected as a debtor. But the attorney hat now has come off. All right. And the executor hat has come on. Two different rules, two different roles. So I have to get used to that learning curve. Are we talking millions right now in terms of what OJ left? Not from what I've done. And I'll tell you my, I'll give you a little idea of my homework. Most of what I've done for my sweeps of OJ's residence, where I presume most of his trust assets are at, you're talking furnishings, TVs, the same stuff that's in your house, Harvey, and in your house, Charles. I'm not a memorabilia guy, but I know who memorabilia guys are, that they're willing to pay top dollar, even for, you know, one man's garbage is another man's treasure, right? So maybe some people will say, look, even though this means nothing to me, some guy who is fascinated with OJ and has a lot of money will say, well, because it's OJ's, I'll pay 50000 for it. What about just cash? What about checking accounts? What about... Um, investment accounts. Um, he made a lot of money over the years. Is that money gone or are we? Uh, did he leave a lot? There's a Florida bank account that Simpson has. I don't know. That's undetermined. I have the exact dollar amount of his Nevada account with me and it's less than five figures. He was getting whatever the maximum amount of Social Security was, OJ was getting. It was exempt from everyone except the IRS, but OJ was getting the max amount, whatever that is. That terminates upon his death. It's probably the same for the NFL pension and the SAG pension, but there is a caveat to that. There may be some residual beneficiary. I'll look into that. But at this point, you can, with a more than 50% chance, say that those also terminate with no residuals that can go into the estates. OJ does get money from memorabilia signings, so that was another stream of income. So it may have been done in cash. I'm not sure but it's certainly there under sworn testimony from OJ that he made money through memorabilia signings.